Hey there, and welcome back to another video. Have you ever wanted to learn a song and you want a line you typed in like, how do I learn to play over this song or these chord changes or whatever? And you got a whole bunch of different responses. You got play all these licks and learn all this stuff or you got stuff that was way too complicated and it seemed like it was over your head and you're like, I'm never gonna be able to learn this. Well, that's why I started this new series called Three Levels of Playing Blank. In this video, I'm gonna be going over the three levels to being able to play over a minor blues. I'm only gonna be discussing the chord changes and how to improvise over a minor blues. I'm not gonna be picking a specific melody to work on, but if you want to work on learning songs and the best way to learn jazz standards by ear, by using sheet music, soloing through it, all this different stuff, I have something for you. But real quick, if you don't wanna learn about standards at all, just close your ears for like a minute while I tell everybody else about this. Next month, September 2024, I'm gonna be launching a brand new course called How to Learn Jazz Standards. So many of you have reached out saying you have problems learning tunes. Either it's too hard, you can't memorize it, you don't know some good processes to actually learn it and it takes way too long and you can't remember it. I took all those pain points into consideration and I made the course for you. What you told me you had problems with, I made a step-by-step -step guide in this course and go through how to actually learn jazz standards in what I think is the most effective and efficient way. More information is gonna be coming out about this as we get closer to the launch date of the course, but just know that I'm so incredibly excited because it will help you learn standards better. All right, welcome back to all the people who don't wanna learn how to play standards better. Let's get on with this video, the three levels of a minor blues. Like always, I have a PDF worksheet download in the top of the description below. Just click that link or you can just go to davepollock.com slash three, the number three, levels minor blues. I know it's kind of long, but that's why I just have the link there. You can click it either right there or in the pinned comment to make it easy for you. Make sure you grab that PDF worksheet. And right now I'm actually gonna dive into that and start teaching you the three levels of playing a minor blues. Okay, here we are inside of the worksheet, three levels of playing a minor blues. You'll see that it says C instruments up here, but I have parts for C instruments. And if you scroll down to the next page, E flat instruments, next page, B flat instruments, and finally a fourth page, bass clef. So when you download the PDF worksheet, and it says C instruments, don't email me and say, where's the E flat? I'm gonna say it's on page two. So you get all of the different keys in the one download just to make it easier for you so you just have it. And it's each key is on its own page. So if you just need the one page, you can print it out or save it, whatever you wanna do, you have it. For this video, I'm gonna be using the concert pitch here, the C instrument one, because I don't know what instrument you're playing, so I figured it's easiest to talk in concert pitch. Like I said, I'm only gonna be focused on improvising through a minor blues. I'm not talking about a specific song. There are some really cool minor blueses out there. I'm doing one in concert C minor. So if you wanna maybe think of the song Mr. PC by John Coltrane, that's a great tune, and you'll hear me reference it a little bit in one of the solos I play, but those are the chord changes here. So level one, what is level one? Before you get into all the chords, before you get into licks, before you get into two fives, before you get into voice leading, it's all about the blues scale. Just like in the major blues that I did for the first episode in this series, the three levels of playing, I said you can use the blues scale throughout and you can use it over a minor blues as well. Sure, are all the notes gonna work perfectly over every chord if you held them out like a whole note? Maybe not, maybe, it depends on what your sound is. But overall, the blues scale will work. So first, here's what a concert C blues scale sounds like. Now what I'm gonna do is play a solo. I'm gonna play a few courses and improvise over this blues, and these are the chord changes here. When we get to level two, I'll explain them in a second. Those are the chord changes I'm using, and I'm only gonna be playing notes of the blues scale. I am not switching away from those notes. Some people say, okay, if I play a C blues scale over C minor, when it goes to F, should I play an F blues scale? No, you're literally using this blues scale throughout the entire chorus. So your entire solo and the entire solo I'm about to play is just using that blues scale. Check it out. Thank you. 
Do you see? How cool was that? Harmonically, note-wise I'm talking about, the blues scale works perfectly. Now, can you just run up and down the blues scale in eighth notes linearly over and over and over again and say, that's a great solo? Well, I mean, maybe. But to me, like I always preach, it's about those non-note musical elements. I'm not just starting at the beginning of the blues scale, going to the top, come back down. I'm varying the rhythms, the articulations, the dynamics, the phrasing, all those different types of things. The intervals, I'm doing some leaps. I'm leaving some space. I'm doing all this different stuff that has to do nothing with notes. That's why this is such a great thing to start with because you don't have to worry about notes. If you're worried about all those non-note musical elements and also you're trying to learn chord changes and two five ones and voice leading, that's gonna be too much for you. And if you're the person who's just getting into improvising and you just wanna you know, get started with it, that's why I'm making this series because this step one is great. Level one is perfect. You can go out and play a gig right now or go to a jam session and play just the blue scale. And as long as you're using good phrasing, dynamics, all the other non-note musical elements, you will sound really good. Now it's time for level two. Like it says, we're just gonna be focused on the chord tones. These are the chords I'm using. C minor for four bars, F minor for two bars, back to C minor for two bars, A flat seven for a bar, G seven for a bar, and then back to C minor for two bars. Some people are gonna say, why don't you have a C minor seven, F minor seven? This is kind of the simplest way because in minor, people really edit kind of the seventh or the sixth. They can play C minor major seven, C minor six, C minor seven. I just wanted to play the triad C minor just to simplify it for you. So first what I'm gonna do, and this is a great tip when you're learning any song, is to just go through in real time, so in this case with a backing track, and just play the chord tones as is. Root position, chord tones. This little percent sign here, if you've never seen that before, that just means repeat the previous measure. So what I'm gonna do now is play all the chord tones over one chorus, exactly how they're written. Here we go. If that was too fast for you, and by the way, I'm doing this at quarter minute equals 200, you could do it as slow as you need to, or if you just wanna get your fingers around the chords and you wanna do it out of time at first and then put it in time, that's fine as well, but make sure you get it to in time so it's holding you accountable to following the roadmap and then speed it up to your desired tempo. Once you get through that and you're able to play the chord tones in real time, then you're going to improvise using only the chord tones. How is this different from the blue scale? Well you're a little handcuffed a bit. Over the first four bars, you can only play these three notes. Is that gonna make the best solo in the world? Maybe, maybe not, but the idea is that I don't want you to focus on all 12 notes as an option, or even the blue scale, because what I want you to do is play the chord tones and then follow the road map, because in bar five here, it switches to F minor. When you get to each of these chords. You get C minor and it switches to F minor, switches back to C minor. There might be some notes that carry over, like the note C. That's the root of the C minor, and that's the fifth of F minor. So if you wanna kind of in bar four, play the note C so it carries over and has a connection over the bar line, that works. If you wanna maybe play an E flat here and use that at the end of bar four, and then that maybe goes up a whole step to F, that is cool. Or you can do maybe G up to, whoops, up to A flat. That works as well, talking about a little bit of voice leading. You don't have to get that in depth with it. You can just play them in root position. But the idea is you're only focused on a couple notes. And I really want you to focus on when the chords move. Because when you eventually go to start adding two fives and playing different lines and stuff, you really have to know when the chords are moving because we're not just playing one overarching blues scale all the way through the 12 bar minor blues. So check it out. I'm gonna play a chord tone solo for a couple choruses. <laughs> Thank you. 
I hope you heard that I was following those chord changes. I was really going through the roadmap, but I was still trying to make a creative solo and use those non-note musical elements to make it sound the way I wanted and not be just locked into playing root position triads or something. I can invert them, different octaves, play faster, slower rhythms, all the stuff I talked about before. That's what I was trying to do there to spice up the chord tones. Now we're on to level three. There are a bunch of different ways I could have gone here. I could have started talking about substituting some different chords or using some outside things or this or that, but I wanted to kind of really get it back to where you would actually play. If you go out to a jam session, you play a gig and somebody calls a minor blues, they're going to be adding some chords in. And more specifically, they're going to be adding some two five ones into the minor blues. Where are we going to be adding them in? Well, just a couple spots here. When we go from the beginning of the chorus in the first measure here, we usually have four bars of C minor. Then it goes to F minor in bar five. But what we're going to do is how do we get to that four chord? Well, we're going to put a two five before it. In minor, if you're trying to establish a minor key, instead of just a minor seven and then a dominant seven, it's going to be minor seven flat five, also called half diminished seven, and then a dominant seven flat nine. If you want to know the differences between minor two five ones, major two five ones, I did a whole bunch of videos specifically about them and specifically about minor two five ones. I'm going to link those in the description below as well, because I don't want to go over how I came to those chords here because I go over that in depth in that video. So check out that minor two five one video. And like I said, I have major two five one videos as well. I'll link them in the description below. So we're going to play a minor two five one, go into the F minor and then everything stays the same. And then at the very last bar, we're going to put another two five here that leads back to the one chord in this case, C minor. So really we're just getting into the four chord and then getting back into the one chord. It's a subtle change and it's a you know, not too much of a change. It's just two bars out of 12, but it does add a lot to the solo and it adds a lot to the playing and it adds a lot to the chorus of just listening to the harmony as well, not just your solo. Like I said, I'm not going to be getting into specifically how to play over minor two, five in this. I had the whole other video on it, but I am going to give you two things. One sound that I love playing over minor two fives is playing the harmonic minor scale of whatever key you're going to. So if you have G minor seven flat five, C seven resolving to F minor over that two five over the G and the C chords, you're going to play the one in this case is F minor. You're going to play an F harmonic minor scale. Here's what an F harmonic minor scale sounds like. Then if you look at the end, we have our D minor seven flat five to our G seven flat nine that goes back to C minor. So over the D and the G chords, you would play C harmonic minor. By the way, I'm always talking concert pitch here. Here's what a C harmonic minor scale sounds like. These are obviously not the only sounds you can use or should use over minor two five. But remember, we're stepping up in levels and, you know, you want to add in some two fives. So you're playing and you went through the chord tones and that's your next step. I wouldn't say, all right, just play anything you want and go crazy. I would say focus on these two measures of minor two five ones and use the harmonic minor scale. Go check out that other video. I know I keep mentioning it, but really that has some lines that I broke down. I give you sample lines and I talk about exactly how to construct the chords and these lines to make them sound great. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play a solo, a bunch of choruses using these chord changes. So I'm not going to also stay inside the chord tones. I'm going to go outside, but I'm going to be sure to hit the two, five, one leading into bar four and the two, five, one leading back to the top. What I'm also going to do is change the track. I'm going to have the track match this, what it says right here in level three. So you're going to hear the chords play the two, five, one. And then at the end, the two, five, one going back to the top. So you can really hear how the overall structure is still the same 12 bar minor blues as before, but now the harmony is being added and you're going to be changing the harmony that you play as well by playing these two, five, ones. Check it out.
right, I hope you enjoyed that solo, but most importantly, I hope you were able to pick out when I was playing the harmonic minor sound and really playing those minor two five ones leading to those landing chords of C minor and F minor, because the goal here is that you're going to learn to do this. You're going to add some of your own lines in here, and you're going to start to hear beyond just the one, the four chord and the five chord and that little flat six chord there. One thing you might be thinking of is, well, yeah, it's gonna sound good and you're gonna hear those two fives because the track changed. Well, I have something for you, check this out. What I'm gonna do now is play that exact same solo. So I'm gonna play the exact same saxophone recording, but the track is gonna go back to this. It's just gonna be the C minor, F minor, A flat seven and G seven. I want you to hear how this solo sounds now with the rhythm section just playing the standard chords. Why do I want you to hear this? Well, a couple of reasons. One of them is you can start thinking about more advanced harmonic things, even if they're not there on the page. If I was just given these chords right here in level two and said, play a solo, I'm not only going to just stick to those exact chords and say, well, it says C minor for four bars, so I shouldn't play anything outside of C minor. No, you can add some things and then people ask, what should I add? Well, I would superimpose, which basically means you're going to be thinking of the chords even though they don't exist, superimposing that two five here and then at the end as well. And what you get is a sound where you're playing the harmony that really leads in. And because these are two five ones, it's a great way to establish a key, whether you're going to a new key like F minor or back to the original key. The other reason why I want you to be able to hear this is that it really just works. The harmony stuff that I'm teaching you, not only does it work over the chords when they are the two fives in the track, but also when they're not there. It's not like it's either or. You can use just chord tones. You can use just a blue scale. You can play these two fives whether the chords exist or not. So I really just want you to hear what it sounds like when I'm playing, when the rhythm section is playing with you, when it's playing different chords, and then you can make the decision when you want to use that or not in your own playing. So here we go. This is the same saxophone solo but with the original track being played underneath. There you go, the three levels of playing a minor blues. I hope you give this a chance and you go through the levels yourself because I know if you do, you're gonna be that much better at playing this song and you're gonna feel more confident moving from level to level to level. You can also do a self-assessment. If you know you're already on level two, you've maybe worked on blues scale stuff, you can follow you know, the overall form, but you just have trouble maybe following the changes or adding things, just start on level two then. It's not like you have to start on level one. Or if you know you're already getting through level two and you've been wondering how to add some two fives or add some other sounds to your blues, specifically minor blues, this is the chance for you. This is the spot that you're gonna do it in level three. Wherever you're at, I think there's something for you here in this video. Don't forget to download the PDF worksheet that goes along with this. Then you can have that entire sheet as a reference whenever you want. Go to davepollock.com slash three, the number three, levels 
minor blues, or you can just click the link in the top of the description or in the pinned comment. I also just want to remind you once again about my course called How to Learn Jazz Standards coming out next month. That's going to be September 2024. It's going to answer all of your questions about the best ways to learn, memorize, and retain jazz standards, how to play through them, how to create your own melodies, your own solos, all that different stuff. It's going to be a really great thing. I know it's going to help you out. So be on the lookout for that next month. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.